Hello, this is Mike Lively, and today we're going to make a simple spark carousel. And this is a three video series, and you can get the code from code.google.com forward slash p forward slash lv3d forward slash downloads forward slash list. Now, let me say right away that there are many ways to do this. Uh, and typically, you might find on the web using a list, but today we're going to show you how to do it using a group. So, before we get started, let's go ahead and show you the application. So here's my simple spark carousel and you can see here as you move the carousel does spin and there's a lot of features here I want to point out so uh, of course as you go over the different panels they highlight you want to notice that the carousel itself is actually wedged look at that it's actually smaller at the top than at the bottom and it's actually angled as well see the angling at the top you typically don't see that in a carousel and it's actually a parameter that I can change in the uh, code itself, so you can actually angle it and wedge it differently. Uh, another thing you want to notice as you slide this uh, carousel, it actually has a little bit of slide. When you let go, see how it, this doesn't stop abruptly? It actually tweens to a, to a halt, so I really like that particular uh, characteristic. It goes from minus 180 on this side to 180 on that side. Uh, once again, as you roll over the different panels, they do highlight. When you click on one, it loses its alpha, see that? And then you can spin that as well. See that shade in the back? And then just click on it again and the alpha comes back. There you go. Pretty cool. Another feature that you want to notice is the resizing. As I begin to pull this in, you see it resizes with the container itself. Very, very, very big deal. Uh, because, for example, you might want to move to a mobile device. And so you don't want to have to write a new program. So depending on whatever device you want, you're on, uh, Layouts has the ability to actually resize not just where the container positions and scale it in the right place, but also change the size of the actual elements. So, and that will be a topic we'll be getting on in the future, but for now we'll look at some basic uh, constraints and uh, scaling laws that we can create. Okay, I just want to point out real quick the outline and what's at the heart and uh, give you some more information. So what are we going to do here today? Well, first we're going to go through the overview of what's in the application, the power of layouts. Two videos you really need to watch are the Frame Ripper, which is at this YouTube address right here. Watch that video. And the Chapter 2 Teaser, which is at this address right here, YouTube address. Watch that video as well. That will help you get up to speed. Uh, the original uh, wheel URL I got from this address here and we're gonna come back and take a look at that real quick and I'm gonna tell you it's not gonna work because it works in beta but not in beta 2 and I'm, I'm in flash builder beta 2 here we're gonna show you how to fix it we're gonna talk about creating a custom class and how that's done you know using the wizard we're gonna do it in paper vision style uh, using the embed class we're gonna instantiate it use s layout and talk about scaling constraints and finally we're gonna add interactivity and there's many ways interactivity. There's a lot of options here as opposed to paper version where there's really just one option. You have three options. Uh, we're going to do it in a particle way in this example. I'll show you how to tween your alpha and how to get that slide tweening motion that I showed you in the demo. So let's get started. So I'm in Flash Builder right now and I just want to point out a few things. Here's the actual application, a simple Spark carousel. And I have my SRC folder and in the default folder is the application itself. I have my assets folder which contains all the thumbnail images for the uh, carousel. I have the GS which is a tween light folder. You're going to want to download tween light and we've talked about that I think in the frame ripper video. Then I have the lively 3D uh, folder which contains a layout and this is what I call lively layouts which is a derivation of the wheel layout that we'll show you where to get here in a moment. I have a thumbs which is a custom class I created so I could get that glow and I have a utilities class which is an embed class which you should have gotten from the Frame Ripper video that I asked you to watch in the previous uh, section. So let's take a look at this one more time and show you where the heart of all this is. The first thing I want to point out is the code itself is less than 100 lines long. And that's pretty cool if you're used to all the programming it takes to create something in paper vision. And at the heart of the code itself is this whole layouts idea right here. I mean this is what makes it tick. And so what I want to do here is just show you that you can just put any layout you want in a sense, throw things in a group, put any layout that you want and the things in that group will take on the form of that layout. So right now we're using what I call lively layouts which is a derivation of the wheel layout that you get from the web. And let's run that and there's my wheel but what if I want another layout? Well all I have to do is just change the layout. Isn't that cool? So come along here, I'm going to comment this out real quick. 
You can comment a line of code out here, just going right click and hit uh, source, toggle comment. And we're going to put this tile layout in. And just by a simple change in code, I now have a tile layout. And it has all the functionality of my carousel. If I click on something, it fades out and fades back in. That's pretty cool. And uh, I don't want to lead you down the path of all uh, happiness because these layouts can be fairly complicated to write. Let me go back to this, uh, comment this out, and let's bring this wheel layout. If I do my control click a trick, so I'm just going to hit, hit the control button, roll over the uh, layout, and click, that'll actually take me to the class itself. And this class was like, oh, about 500 lines of code. And that might seem pretty complicated to you guys. And you may be screaming your head off, oh no, how will I ever do that? But it's really easy to get into writing this code. I'm going to show you one more time. Let's uncomment this real quick here. What Adobe has done for us, which is terrific, is that it's giving us all its Spark code. Now this is Adobe class, the tile layout class, and I can actually look at that class and look at all the code and write my own code, which is very similar to Adobe's code. So one of the fantastic things here is, is that Adobe's not keeping the secret. It's actually giving us its classes, and we can write classes based upon that classes, and that's exactly how the wheel layout and now the lively layouts class was created. And we're going to move on from here. I'm going to show you how to get the wheel layout and how to fix it so it will run in beta 2, and then we'll modify it to uh, create the simple Spark carousel. So I'd like to start off the bat with doing a little bit of house cleaning, and let's talk about the wheel URL. So let's go right to that website. And what we're going to do is demonstrate the application and show you where to download it and show you how to fix it because it won't work in beta uh, anymore. We're in beta 2 and things have changed since then. So let's go to the site. And so you can download the site from EasyFlex and the address is right here. So make sure you go there and, and download it if you want to. Otherwise, just use my layout. You can just download it from the, the code from uh, LV3D. And once you download it from uh, Easy Flex, uh, I'm going to demonstrate for you real quick. And this is a really nice application because it brings in these Flickr images. It has a search bar. And you can actually learn a lot from studying how it was done. And you can see when you roll that, it rolls back and forth. And that's really nice. But if you try to bring that into Flash Builder 2, Beta 2, it will not work. And let's show you why and how to fix it. So we're in Flash Builder right now. And there's a cute little trick that you can do to actually look at both of these at the same time. Here's the lively layout and here's the wheel layout. You see it's got an error, all these error bars. If you actually want to look at these simultaneously, you can actually just drag one to the side like this. It'll actually line both of the codes up together so you can actually look at them together. Isn't that a cool trick? So this really comes in handy when you're trying to compare code and find errors. So let's take a look at the first error. Well, the first error with the wheel layout is the navigation system. Here you see uh, basically scroll unit. Well, scroll unit does not work anymore. That's right. You now have navigation unit. So what you want to do is go, just go through and change everything that has scroll unit on it. And you can use that using the control F. Just highlight that and hit control F. And then just you know use that to search down through all the different scroll units. And just change everything that has scroll unit on it to navigation unit. And now there's actually even a more significant problem and that has to do with layers and depths. In the update display method there's a new thing uh, that uh, has been done and it's wonderful and it gives you the ability to sort layers automatically so if you looked at my chapter one videos of Paper Vision 3D I actually had to create my own sorters but actually Adobe has its own sorter and you can use that to sort these layers and so you notice in my carousel I'm not worrying about sorting it's all being done automatically but there's a problem because from beta 1 to beta 2 this name was changed from layer to depth so you want to make sure that you go over to the code and make that change to depth now there's a few other things you need to change to make this code work and so I'm just going to leave it as an exercise for you to compare my code lively layouts with uh, with the wheel layout and get it all straight but uh, once you do that if you want to just run the wheel layout then you can in beta 2 otherwise just use lively layouts and create your own layouts alright let's uh, move on this is Mike Lively I hope you enjoyed this video